Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome to a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we're taking a look at another Season 14 Ninjago set. This one is called set number 71747, The Keeper's Village. With 632 pieces, this set retails for about $50 USD and it's a pretty good looking set, all things considered. Now, this is one that was not part of my initial Season 14 haul because my local Target did not have it, so I ordered it online and built it up and now we are here ready to review it for you guys today. Now I shouldn't say review because this video is not going to be a professional review. I'm not going to take a look at everything here. I just want to give my overall thoughts on this set and point out some highlights as we go along. I think a good place to start would be with the figures. So why don't we go ahead and get started by taking a look at the five minifigures that you get in this set. All right. So just taking a look at some of the figures that we get in this set. This guy is of course Kai, but this certain variant of Kai is referred to as Island Kai. As you can see, he is very much equipped with some weaponry. He's got two of these new golden machetes. I don't know if they're new per se. I'm sure they've been used in other pieces or other places before, but this is the first I'm seeing of them in a Ninjago set unless I'm missing something. You can also see that on his back he does have a silver katana, which is always fun. His suit this time around is very impressive. I love that hair headband combo piece. We previously saw that piece being used on some of the new legacy sets, but now we're finally getting it for its intended purpose to be used in season 14 sets. I really love how Kai's torso is printed it's very clean, very like dignified, I'd say. Kind of a little bit of a different take than what some of the other island ninja are doing with some of their more chaotic printing. Kai's is very simple by the book, very much like, very clean, like I said. It, it's really nice. I like it. I love his symbol up in the top uh, left hand corner there uh, for us. His right hand corner, top right hand corner. His arms are done in a dark red, so his arms do have some type of contrast to the overall body. And yeah, I really do like this. Well, let's go ahead and take some stuff off so we can take a look at some of the other printing. And here we have Kai basically stripped down of everything, his weapons, his armor, all of that. Uh, I also took off his mask. As you can see, the back of this figure is really nicely printed as well. Again, keeping with that organized theme and you can kind of see what his uh, alternate face looks like. Surprise, surprise, it's the same one that we've seen for like four years now, so nothing super new there. Why don't we move on to looking at one of the other ninja? I will say though, I really enjoy this Kai figure, but it's not my favorite figure in this set. I think my favorite figure in this set is Island Cole here. This is the newest incarnation of Cole, and I think he looks awesome. As you can see, his weapon is quite crazy this time. It's kind of made up of a whole bunch of different stuff, including one of those golden machete pieces, like I said. It's kind of like a brick-built scythe, almost. I think that's what I'm going to be calling it, but we're just going to remove it right now because it kind of uh, hinders our view of the figure itself, which does look very cool, I must say. Like the other ninja, he is equipped with a silver katana, uses the same armor piece as his Season 11 counterpart. His hair is technically new. Not new in terms of a piece, because we've seen that piece be used for Ninjago before, not only on Cole, but also for Master Wu back during Season 9. But his headband is a new color. We've never seen this with an orange headband. Uh, Cole previously used this during the Ninjago movie, but he had a brown headband instead of an orange one. I like the orange look a little bit more, though. The rest of his print is very cool. Uh, his arms do utilize a dark gray color, which does contrast really well against the black. We've seen Cole do that before in past suits, but this one, I think, does a lot better of a job at keeping a consistent look, I'd say. If I had to complain about anything, I would complain that the overall torso is much more gray than it is black, but realistically, that's not really that big of a problem. This is what Cole looks like, all de -armed armored and de-weaponized, if you will. You can kind of see his face print a little bit better as well, and the back of him is a very solid print. I really like how that looks there. Very clean. Like, some of these island suits are really clean in terms of their prints, while others are quite chaotic. You can also see Cole's art alternate face, and, uh, you know, surprise, surprise, it's still the exact same one that we've seen since the Ninjago movie. So you can either make him happy, or you can make him extremely angry and tough. I usually opt to do this one. Here we have Island J. Now, Island J I actually really enjoy as well. All of the ninja in this set I really do like. As you can see, J's weapon consists of, once again, one of those golden machetes, but this time it's on a chain, so it's like a little flail thing. You can kind of swing it around and do that. Uh, we're just going to remove it. We've seen J uh, use flails before, and it's really not all that different from what he's used prior. Taking a look at the actual figure, though, this is quite a nice version of J. I'm very fond of a lot of these Island ninja. I think they're awesome. J's arms are, again, 
and done in a different blue, dark navy blue compared to his normal traditional blue. You can see how that contrasts there. And his hairpiece is just brand new entirely. We had never seen it before uh, prior to season 14. It wasn't used for the movie or any legacy sets. So this is technically a brand new hairpiece for season 14. And I think it looks awesome. It pretty much combines Jay's older hairpiece with a headband, similar to a lot of the other ninja this go around. And I think it works. Jay's hairpiece here is technically the only new one that we get in this set, uh, new in terms of mold and color. So why don't we go ahead and take some stuff off so we can get a better look at that print. So here's what Island Jay looks like with all of his stuff removed. I really like the print on his torso. It's kind of more chaotic than Kai's in, in my opinion, but it's still very clean and I still really enjoy it. On the back, this is what it looks like. Not as clean, again, as some of the other ninja, but still great nonetheless. I love how every ninja has their symbol on the back like that. Reminds me of the older days when Ninjago figures used to do that. We can also take a look at Jay's alternate face, which of course makes him very happy. Uh, same Jay face that we've seen, again, since the movie. The faces have not changed. I prefer the much more angry Jay expression, however. In terms of bad guys, here we have the first one. This is a Thunder Keeper. I've already talked about this figure before in a previous video, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. His weapon is a neat little scythe thing. Not as impressive as Cole's scythe, I must say, in this set, but still cool nonetheless. I really like that mask. I think that's awesome. Here is what his face looks like underneath, and in terms of back printing and whatnot, not a whole lot, but I really do enjoy the Keeper's aesthetic overall. If you want to hear me talk a little bit more about this figure in depth, I highly recommend checking out some of my other uh, review style videos for some of these new sets. A character that I actually want to spend a decent amount of time on is Chief Mamatis. This is the main bad guy of the entire season, and we get him in this set as well. And just taking a look, like taking a few steps back and just looking at this guy, He's quite impressive, I will say. Uh, taking away his staff really quick, his staff just uses uh, normal pieces to make this kind of lightning staff. Just removing that really quick, it kind of does, I guess, give us a better look at the, the figure, of course, much like a lot of these figures do that have really large weapons. Uh, speaking of very large things, his head crest thing stands out a lot compared to the rest of the figure, and it is quite impressive. Taking that off so we can take a look at that separately, it is a very impressive piece. It's just one solid piece, except for these two little tusks down here, those you add on. But you can basically swap those out with whatever color you want. That does make this piece somewhat customizable, and I suppose you can get a better look at his face sculpt there as well, or his face print rather. Very similar to some of the other keepers. In terms of back printing on his head, he does have an alternate face, so we can kind of see what that looks like with uh, with the helmet. It makes him look like he's yelling or he's going into battle, maybe a war cry, something like that. Uh, his cape is really nice. It's a nice fabric cloth material. And just lifting that up, we can take a look at his back printing. Like I said, very similar to some of the other keepers except he does have some gold detailing while some of the other keepers just have a standard light brown so overall chief modest is still a very solid character i'd say not really sure what he's like in the show just yet because as of the time of recording the english release of season 14 has not yet been a thing so i'm curious to see what his character is like i just love his printing on his torso as well overall this is a very impressive figure that i'm happy to finally own officially for my ninjago collection and getting the figures out of the way, as we can see here, this basically is what we have left over, the entire rest of the set. This set has a fair number of pieces, and the majority of them do go into this build. Now, a couple of things to note, I might have switched up some of the leaf pieces. Uh, these, these leaves right here, these light green ones, might originally have been intended to go on the other end of this chain, but the instructions weren't super clear about that, so those might be swapped around a little bit. I, it's kind of hard to see colors in some of these instruction booklets sometimes, and those are very similar colors. So I do apologize if anything is inaccurate here. I tried to build it the best I could. My instruction booklet was kind of dull for some reason. I figured the best thing that we can do to take a look at this thing is to kind of split it apart because it can very much do that. You can make this full display or you can separate it in a couple of different ways. The first thing that we can do is remove this entire assembly up top. It does come off in a couple of different pieces. So uh, removing it all at once is quite tricky, but there we go. This is, an, this is an entirely separate character that we will take a look at in a second here. That that just leaves this, but it can separate even more. If we come back here, as you can see, it can open up a little bit. There's a little clip back there. You can just separate that, and now you're looking at two distinct parts of this island setting. And this is just a little bucket of random stuff that we can take a look at super quick. It's uh, not intended to go anywhere from what I can figure out. This is basically soup in a pot. Just comes with a couple of random pieces that I really don't care all that much about. So there's that. In case you are excited, you can make soup in this set. Excellent. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look 
at, uh, at this guy, because he's actually quite important. Now this guy I've been kind of referring to as a stone golem. I think that's what they're officially called in the Ninjago canon, and he does look very much like a totem pole inspired thing. This is of course its own being. All of these are stickers on the front, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, putting those on was very, very nerve wracking. But yeah, these guys can actually split apart into three separate components. You kind of saw me accidentally do that earlier in the video, but essentially what you get here is you get the, uh, the brown component, you you get the yellow component, which is the middle of the totem pole, and then at the very top you get the red component. The reason I call them brown, yellow, and red is because, well, this guy uses brown colors in addition to the normal teal and gray. This guy in the middle uses yellow in addition to the teal and gray, and you guessed it, the red one uses red in addition to teal and gray. Looking at these guys more closely though, I do think that they all have very individual expressions and I do really enjoy that. I apologize if the lighting gets kind of uh, bad here, but uh, this is basically the best we got. I really like this guy too. Like they eventually get, uh, they get more and more angry as you kind of rise up the pole, which I think is cool. And their individual articulation is fun to look at as well. Each one's got a different set of weapons, but the articulation is pretty much the same. Uh, you get these mixel style joints here that can basically just move around and, you know, they're not the most poseable things ever and they do kind of get in the way when they're all stacked up, but I do like that. You do have that option, of course. Uh, the backs are pretty barren on these guys, but essentially they get larger weapons as well as you go up the pole. The yellow one here is pretty cool. I love his expression, and he has these little katana things. Each one of them has a different style of teeth as well. You can kind of see the brown component here has like these kind of, uh, kind of, uh, what do you call it, like derpy teeth, I suppose. And then that kind of evolves into these like fangs that this guy has, and that's kind of cool. Again, the backs are very barren on these things. And eventually what you can do is you just stack them on top of each other. That's just done using um, a couple of uh, various Technic axles combined with these little holes at the bottom. You just kind of stack them on top like that. The red guy is essentially the leader of this entire thing. And as you can see, he does have the amulet stored on top. I've got a bunch of those amulets now. I think I have three Three of them in total and uh, this guy kind of wears it like a crown you can kind of see some purple electricity shooting out the back of him you can pose those around if you wish as well and uh, this guy's weapon is like a couple of these uh these white swords very thick swords compared to the katanas that the other guys have or the knives and this guy also does have this nice crown piece as well being the top of the totem pole it's you know obvious to say that he is the king the superior being there amongst the three and altogether this is what it looks like very cool setup there and as you can see for size comparison just bringing in a ninja really quick this is how big he is compared to a character so as you can see the ninja are going to be facing off against these guys in the next season and they're going to be having some type of difficulty with him not only as like a unit but also like individually like if we take just the brown one off you can see that size comparison too with a ninja. It still is gonna be a very unfair fight, I'd say, but overall, I'm very impressed with these with these totem pole dudes, the stone golems, whatever you wanna call them. I'm impressed with this. This is really a fun addition to the set. When you bring in one of the overall settings for this set as well, you can kind of see where this guy's gonna be attaching. There is a red little axle up there, and that just plugs into the brown golem's little slot down there. And uh, it's kind of easier said than done. You gotta kind of align it in a proper way, but uh, move some stuff out of the way. Eventually you do get it and you can pose that like that. Just kind of depends. For the purposes of this video, we're taking it off because I wanna take a look at this thing now, which is one of the major parts of this set. Now this thing isn't really all that great to me. I've seen better builds for Ninjago before, but I love just how impressive this is. I think my favorite part is like this mouth over here. I think it very much looks like something like Godzilla. When I was building it, I was like, okay, yeah, this gives me Godzilla vibes, especially with the way that the top of the head is kind of shaped. I love that. I love the orange teeth. As you can see, just leaning into the mouth, it's not like a perfect fit. It is quite gappy. You can basically put a finger in there and wiggle that around a little bit if you very well please and this is kind of flimsy but this does have printing right there that's cool lava flows down i love the lava stuff here as you can see some of the fire up top as well kind of you know exists it's almost like a little campfire up there and it does kind of flow down the mountain into this little lava spilling thing i love how they're using this uh this launcher piece this minifigure hand launcher to be representing like a lava fall, if you will. We kind of saw that with the Ninjago City Gardens as well. They use that same technique. Of course, this whole thing can 
open up and you can kind of see what's inside there and uh, it's just a little jail so you can go ahead and you know uh, open that up and you got a little jail in there now the jail itself doesn't have all that much going on but you do get a slot to put a figure and there's a bucket in there for something and uh, it also does uh, open up as well you can kind of pull this it's kind of hard to see so i'll do it from the other side so you can see it a little better uh, when you uh, hit the plant on the inside, lift it up, if you will, this whole thing kind of opens up and it's like a little escape hatch. So that's fun. It's a nice little action feature. Um, you could always put a character in there if you want. Otherwise, I just prefer closing the thing up. It's better for display. I think it looks great like that on its own. Uh, just getting the camera off the tripod for a little bit and moving it around, you can take a closer look at what I talked about earlier. This little campfire is super nice right there. That is where the stone golem attaches on that red peg. This is kind of interesting. I imagine this is where the chief would sit. So you can always take Chief Mamatis and uh, seat him on his throne, if you will. And then there you go. That's what he looks like there. You can also see a little staff there as well with a purple crystal, a little purple diamond thing. It's always fun. Overall, I like the look of this thing. You can see a shield right there. We've seen some of the keepers use that before as well. And there are several weapons kind of uh, around this area as well. You get the sense that this very much is the chief's throne. So I like that look. There's a little stairway going up the side here, and that's how the chief would presumably get to his uh, previously mentioned throne. Overall though, I'm a really big fan of how this went together. I think it's a lot of fun. I feel like this set will definitely be a lot more popular with like the younger uh, viewers because it is very much like a play set, like I said. If we turn the thing around to the back, you can kind of see how things are a little bit empty and a little more barren. It doesn't look super great from the back. However, it does give you access to the inside of this cave where you can always, you know, put another figure if you want. It is very much a play set, like I said. It's meant for a younger demographic. Not really up my alley, but it does make for a good display piece as well. If you want to always populate this scene with figures, which I probably will end up doing. I'll probably put all of the Keeper's figures from all of the Season 14 sets in this uh, this village, if you will, and just kind of populate the scene. This is the other part of the island that you get, and this seemingly is a little bit more tropical than the overall rough, rocky uh, presence that came with the first part that we looked at. And this also does have some action features. As you can see, there's a lot going on here as well. It is a very small component, but there is a lot that I want to take a look at. We're going to be taking the camera off the tripod again, so we can get a closer look at this thing. Very nice. Uh, this thing can always move up and down. This is, of course, a tree or a trap or something. The box suggests that you attach a figure to the end of that leaf and just kind of have them hanging from a chain, I guess, from the top of a tree. Whatever works. We can see a warning sign right there. That's cool. There's another sticker right there, uh, possibly um, talking about your impending doom. So if you wanted to, you can always put a figure there. I'm going to put J there, for example. And behind him, you can see a little launcher. Now, this launcher shoots off a couple of little purple studs. And when you go ahead and push this axle back here, you can kind of launch out a stud and <laughs> knock J over. This is what came out of it, just a little purple stud. Uh, they do give you a lot of extras in this set, just in case you do lose them, which is nice because one of them just flew off to uh, to who knows where. But overall, I like the look of this thing. It does have some really incredible action features, I will say. It's just not my preferred thing. Like I said, this is very much a play set, but it is still a good display set as well. It's just not intended for my target demographic, I think. Some other stuff you can see here, lots of foliage. Those can be adjusted around depending on what you want. Uh, lots of those pieces included in this little diorama. You see a skull in there as well, presumably somebody that tried to navigate this island but ended up getting killed, which is quite gruesome. And there's a little crab down there. Probably my favorite part is the the small red crab that you see. Um, like I said, this, this can attach to uh, to this section as well. So if we want to do that super quick, we'll just do that. And this attaches with this clip and that little bracket. You just kind of connect them together like so. And then you can kind of pose this any way that you please and create a diorama like that. Now, of course, it will be complete if you attached the stone golem from the top and now you're looking at a completed diorama. Again, this is a very good play set. It's very solid for the younger viewers as well. I think that I think they're going to have a lot of fun with this. There's lots of stuff to do, lots of action features, lots of open and, I guess, obvious things for play. I'd say the play value on this is very good. For somebody like me that doesn't really play with these or, you know, someone who's more into, like, collecting and displaying and kind of creating dioramas, I think this still works for that as well. I'm going to be populating this scene with, uh, with various keepers that I've received from some of the 
the other sets, and I feel like it'll create for a nice little diorama and a nice little display. This very much is the Keeper's Village, so why not go ahead and populate the scene with a bunch of keepers. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for my look at the set. Overall, I like it. I, it's, not, it's not my favorite set, like I said, uh, from this wave, but it's still really fun. It was a lot of fun to put together, uh, kind of confusing in a few parts as well. So again, that just has to go back with uh, with colors and whatnot. I guarantee you some of the colors I might've switched up on this, especially with the leaves. So I apologize for that. And I don't know, overall, this is a very solid looking set. I just realized if you wanted to get the little the little soup bin back out what you can do is you can kind of play uh, you can kind of play cannibal a little bit and perhaps jay is being cooked in the soup pot i don't know why jay always gets the short end of the stick but i think it's better cooking him in the soup pot than you know hanging him from a tree so that's just my personal thoughts on that again this set's very good why don't we go ahead and wrap things up so there you guys have it that has been my look at set number 71747 the keeper's village a pretty good set i'd say uh not my favorite season 14 set i think the jungle dragon is just a little bit better than this one is but this one is still worth it it has some really fantastic figures and a really good build at that as well you get some key components of the season 14 story so if you can get this set i'd highly recommend it it's easily one of the best ones this season of the you know four sets that we have it's not as good as the jungle dragon but definitely better than the jungle chopper bike and i can't really say a lot about the catamaran sea battle because i'm not going to be getting it so uh, that's going to pretty much do it for my video here let me know down below in the comments what you think about this set do you like it do you not like it do you have this set or do you want it let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did feel free to like comment subscribe do all that fun stuff and check out the links down below in the description for other forms of social media as always big shout out because that's my patreon supporters including once again the marvelous jan Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Hannah Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.